as we said before, uh, neither you nor I have any uh, relationship, legal or otherwise, with Tom Brady and Giselle Bündchen. But hypothetically, walk walk our audience through what you would say to the question, can we settle this divorce before we even file it? So I would first worry about confidentiality before you even talk about divorce or anything. I want to have some tight uh, documents that say this whole discussion, this whole process is going to be um, covered by confidentiality with some severe penalty clauses for anyone who leaks it or, or um, you know, allows it information to get out and then we talk about the premium and especially when they're both well known and, and their reputation you know there, there's so few cases like this we hear about them all the time we see Sylvester Stallone and Jeff Bezos but that's because there's so few of them that that's why the press talks about it but they're really so rare where both sides are going to be okay financially and both sides have a public image to protect you know Tom Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes both had movie careers so Whatever they're fighting about money-wise, if they damage the other one's career, the financial consequence to the harm that might have come out of an ugly divorce probably outweighed whatever the division of property is. So the premium would be on getting it done privately and, and making sure um, that nothing got out. That, that would be more important perhaps than how much money each side got, was how do you protect their image and their reputation? Not a, not a lot of people have that concern. When you have that concern, you know, I could get my client an extra million dollars, but it cost him exposure to something he did that ruins his movie career so much for an extra million dollars. He just lost a hundred million over the course of the next 10 or 15 years. Right. right. In terms of the non-disclosure agreement for the negotiations, I've run into situations where I get bogged down in that, uh, spending two, three weeks just on the, on the NDA. If, if you had that experience, yeah, you start you start thinking about it. She shall not say anything about what happened. Well, what if he goes public and says something bad about her? Can she not defend herself? So it's okay if it's in response to something. What if somebody else in the media accuses her of ruining the marriage, and it wasn't him that said it? Can she then disclose something that's honestly truthful that shows that she wasn't the wrong person? You know, how do you do that? I mean, there are a lot of exceptions. And, we can't predict everything, but we've got to do our best to predict problems that we've seen in the past and things that are foreseeable. Um, they're they're very difficult. It's also very difficult to explain to people there is no standard uh, non-disclosure agreement because the only club you've got is liquidated damages so that the agreement itself says how much there is in damages. And so I, it's always challenging and I almost want to hire another lawyer so I can get working on the case just to do right. the NDA. Right. You could see somebody saying, well, he's got to pay $100,000 if he defames her. And there are people that have so much money that would say, I'll write five, five checks so I can yes. do it five times because, I, <laughs> you know. It's not relevant. Okay. So let's let's go back to uh, get into the settlement itself. Let's assume for purposes of discussion that, uh, Tom Brady's assets are within five legal organizations, could be like corporations that pay their own taxes, the rights to the intellectual property. And Giselle's intellectual property is well buttoned down, separate legal entities. Uh, assuming that the estate itself isn't terribly complicated in terms of financial assets and legal organizations, how hard would you predict that this would be to settle before filing? And when I say before filing, somewhere in the next 90 days, say one of the parties comes to you, your representative says, Randy, can you get this done in 90 days? So first of all, I want to be clear, the context, we're using these folks as examples, but in anybody that was in that situation, and that's sort of the answer that I'm giving, is not specific because we know nothing about their situation and we don't want it to seem like we wish a divorce on them or want anybody, but no. for educational purposes for those people who are curious how cases like those go, um, it's, it's difficult. And I would say 90 days, are you kidding? I, I probably couldn't read all the documents in the first 90 <laughs> days. I, um, that's mm -hmm. almost like saying, I, I know that I'm not going to cover everything. You know, the, the kind of assets that I would imagine they have and the complications of those assets, it's not just 
how much? You know, numbers are no big deal. If it's, you know, a million, 10 million, 100 million, it's just where the decimal point is. It's what do they have that we haven't even thought of? You know, that, like you say, name, image, image, and likeness is such a unique and new and unfolding area. Just to understand it, I, I would say 90 days, I, I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, when I've represented uh, high profile CEOs, one of the items that we run into when we've got to do a uh, business valuation is uh, protecting trade secrets and other highly sensitive confidential information that sl- seems to slow everything down. Have you run into a situation where a celebrity, say a professional athlete or model or actress, ends up having uh, intellectual property and trade secret protection for business interests that they own and, so have, to, and have valuation problems related there too. Worse than that is we've done everything and got it all together for the prenup or for the uh, settlement agreement. And then they say, I forgot. I have this other entity. Hey, we negotiated everything. And then they say, well, can we just add that in and, and buy that and redo it. And then we say, well, now some of the other values are different. So maybe that affects things because the stock market is brought up. So that, that's even more common. But yeah, it's hard. And look, a lot of these folks, especially the artists, right? The, the singing artists, the musicians, the, that's not what they do. They don't manage their money. They, they do what they do well. They act, and they sing, and they play. And they trust other people. You know, they're not really often good at knowing where every asset is, and which asset they have, and which company they have is the most valuable. You know, their name may be the most valuable thing they own. Their, their contract with a, a, a game, an online gaming company, may be their best asset. They don't know. They're trusting the people around them. So hopefully there are good people around them that can tell us this is what you need to protect. This is his number one asset or her number one asset. And, um, and you hope for the best. Back to settlement before filing and the divorce. Is it likely or not likely that uh, counsel for two large celebrities, again, we don't know who that's going to be. Uh, is there? Is it possible that they would go to mediation before filing? 100%. We've got to be careful, right? But it happens in celebrities and non-celebrity cases. Usually in those situations, both sides have something to lose. You know, without formal discovery, you, you can get the same information. Um, maybe somebody hid something. You know, we're going to look and we're going to hire forensic experts to, to check it out. But if my client's got nothing to hide, I'm probably less inclined. But if my client's got some behavior issues that he or she doesn't want to be emphasized, or uh, there's a lot of reasons to do it privately. We do... Uh, we do exchange stuff. And then, of course, we rely on it. We put a clause often in agreements that say if somebody deceived or defrauded or, or transferred money and didn't disclose it, and the other one finds out about it later, then they can get it or they get part of it or half of it um, to try to uh, protect them. But, you know, the bottom line in those cases, especially like we're talking about in celebrity cases, the benefit of getting it done privately often outweighs the possible missed asset or account that that, that can happen. Um, but even in formal discovery, it happens. There are people that are going to be dishonest. And you and I have had this conversation. I'm sure you've had it with clients where you say, look, at this point, even if he or she has a million dollars in the Cayman Islands, they have done such a good job hiding it. You'll probably never find it anyway. But we can spend a lot of time and money looking for it. Um, but there'll come a point in time where we have to say, can you live on what we've found or do you want to keep fighting to find out if it's there? And then we have the flip side of, well, we spent 50 or a hundred thousand dollars looking for money in the Cayman Islands. And we never found it. Why did we waste that money? So, you know, as a lawyer, we can't win if we don't look really hard for it and save the money. Or if we look really hard for it, don't find it. Why did we spend the money? It's a tough balance. Yeah. But that's, uh, nobody's going to feel sorry for us on that. <laughs> Right. We could just complain to each other over a beverage at uh, Disney at conferences. 